All right, welcome back to the Just Fantasy Baseball Podcast. Rami Lavi, that's Vince D'Amato. We got some headlines for you, but you'll notice I'm not going to give you all the trades. We're going to do a special trade deadline, post-trade deadline episode on Wednesday or Thursday, uh, depending on how our schedules work out. The trade deadline is Tuesday, I believe, at maybe 4 or 5 p.m., something like that, um, Eastern time, maybe 3 p.m. And then uh, – so. I do like it this way, and you can tell me what you think, Vince. I like having all the trades trickle in, like start earlier. It feels like in the past, specifically with Major League Baseball, you wait till like day of, and then you're kind of underwhelmed. Uh, we've had some big moves already so far, so it should you know affect fantasy baseball uh, a lot over the next couple of weeks. Yeah, I, I agree with that. When I saw the first trade, I think the biggest one that we saw right away was a Rosarena um, to Seattle. And how even, cool was, is that da- him dapping up the fans wearing his jersey? Did you see that? No. He, walked, he sat after he was traded. He sat and as a spectator at the Rays game mm. for the rest of the game, watched mm. it as a fan, and he's going around like high-fiving fans and walking around. Like there are guys wearing a Rosarena Rays jerseys, and he's just like shaking their hands and being like, thank you for your, you know, thank you for being fans, whatever, on his way out of the yeah. race. It's so cool. Yeah, that is cool. No, yeah, and I, but I agree with you. Um, It does look like the deadline is Tuesday at 6 p.m. Eastern. So mm-hmm. I assume we'll get a couple more moves. There's a lot of names out there. But yeah, I agree. I love watching them trickle in as opposed to last day. And then, oh, hey, there was only one big trade. You know, Juan Soto, whoever that is, was traded at the Juan deadline. Soto, yeah. So mm-hmm. I, I'm not going to mention those trades. We do have some big news. Let's start with uh, Kodai Senga. One start, mm-hmm. and then he's out for the year. He looked good, too. It's such a shame, a guy who... You know, we waited for him all year long. We didn't really know. We weren't getting like any real reports. What's going on with him? He's healthy, but he's not ready. Now he's ready, but he's not feeling as healthy. And then he comes back, pitch is great. And then a fluke, like jumping off the mound on a pop-up to get out of the way. And he, you know, some ruptures his calf or whatever. And they said, they come out right away and they say he's going to be out at least for the regular season, which basically means the season's over. And for fantasy purposes, it is. Um, so that sucks. Yeah. 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 Not, not, not much else to say. Just too bad. You know, he's yeah, a talented and guy. Similar, a similar story with uh, Christian Yelich, who's going to opt not to have back surgery. But if he did have back surgery, his season would be over. He's going to try and rehab and come back. And Mike Trout, who's on a rehab assignment and gets hurt again. And another guy who, I mean, you've heard it once, you heard it a million times. Mike Trout can't seem to stay healthy consistently. Yeah, we do have some exciting guys coming off of injuries, though. Casas yeah. is hopefully coming back. He's uh, starting a rehab assignment this week. Jeffrey Springs should be back on. Yeah, Clayton pitching. Kershaw make his um, season Clayton debut. Kershaw. Yeah, so it's a, it's a give and take. It is. Yeah, it always is. Um, and then a couple others who got hurt today were uh, Ronaldo Lopez and yeah. uh, Suarez also um, from Philly went on the IL. But that's kind of opened the door for some of these other pitchers in Philly. And we'll talk about that a little bit later. Um, And then Freddie Freeman, I don't know if you saw this one, Uh, sad situation, scary situation. He has a family emergency with his one of his kids being in the hospital. I'm not sure what's going on. I don't want to speculate. So, um, you know, we don't know how long he's going to be away from the team. There's obviously no timetable on that, but he's going to take as much time. He's not IL eligible, you know, but um, he's going to take as much time as he needs to um, be with his family at a time that's just rough. And you just, you know, hope and pray everything's okay over there. Yeah, it does say by rule he'll miss between three and seven days, but I imagine if it is something with his kid, he may take more than seven days. I hope that I'm assuming the Dodgers will be patient. I don't know what that looks like, but um, yeah, best to Freddie and his family. Um, Correct. Um, So what we're going to do, because next episode is going to be a full kind of trade episode, so we'll do a few things here. We'll obviously do our regular waiver wire pickups. We'll give you our streaming pitchers. We'll give you our MVP unlock of the week. We'll also give you who's hot and who's not on this episode because next week we're go or yeah next week we're going to be doing the trade recap and then adjusted values buy low sell high based on their new assigned values from everyone who's traded. So we're going to do that next week. So for today or I guess later this week if you're listening to this by the time you're listening to this is Monday, so it'll be later this week. Um, and then uh, so for today, what we're going to talk about is we'll start with the waiver wire pickups. Who do you have for me, Vinny? Uh, I'll start with this guy because you may have him knowing your Yankee bias. Uh, Austin Wells, 
uh, mm. catcher for the New York Yankees. Rostered in just 44% of leagues. His last six games, he's been on fire. Um, nine for 21, which is a 429 batting average. Couple home runs. OBP of 536. And my favorite part, five walks to just one strikeout. And it appears like he's been playing every day. Um, and at this rate, why wouldn't he, right? The Yankees are, I wouldn't say they're out of the hole yet. I think they're still struggling a little bit. So why not get your best bats in the lineup? Um, Austin Wells is one of your best bats right now. At least he has been for the last week. And Rami, we've talked about it so many times. Catching still thin. So if Austin Wells is available on your waiver wire, I would definitely be looking to go grab him. Again, 44% rostered. Um, and he's been hot. So ride it while he's hot. Yeah, and Austin Wells is another guy, like you said, he's going to be playing every day because they don't really have a real backup catcher, and Jose Trevino's out with an injury. So, you know, we don't know what's going on. There's not really an update on Trevino, and Wells, not only that, he's hitting cleanup in this lineup. Even today, after the trade for Jazz Chisholm, you know, he's still batting cleanup in the lineup. Now, things will change. Stanton's going to come in here. I do expect the Yankees to make more moves. We'll see. I mean, this is not a Yankee podcast, but, you know, We'll see what the Yankees do the rest of the tra- the rest of the way ahead of the trade deadline. Um, but again, I you know I do I hope <laughs> uh, I hope the Yankees make some more moves and Austin Wells is not their cleanup hitter moving forward. But it seems like they're going to keep that bat in the lineup in a prominent position, if not cleanup and maybe second, third, fifth, you know, seventh, uh, but top between like second and sixth, I think, in the lineup uh, until uh, you know until he stops playing like he's been playing. Um, I mentioned, I kind of foreshadowed this a little bit before. So my number one guy is Tyler Phillips, uh, who obviously crushed it with the Philadelphia Phillies, his last couple of starts. Um, And really it was his, what was the start yesterday that he just absolutely dominated. Um, So the last month he's thrown 25 innings, got a 1.8 ERA, 0.76 whip, three wins, 19 strikeouts in those 25 innings. Um, he's rostering 22% of Yahoo League. So if you can still find Tyler Phillips while he's hot, go grab him. I um I don't know if I should mention this now, but I will because we're on the topic of Tyler Phillips. I have Tyler Phillips as a streaming option um, for one of my streamers. The reason why I didn't put him as a waiver wire pickup is because not this start, but the following start is against the Los Angeles Dodgers. And I almost don't care how well he does. I'm not going to probably start him against the Dodgers. So I imagine streaming him, dropping him. Um, He's facing Seattle, new look with a Rosarena, but I still would roll with him at least for the start. And if you want to hold on to him after that, absolutely. But I threw him in as a streamer. So you'd stole one of my streamers. You suck. Um, Moving on. All right. Uh, do you have another waiver wire pickup? I do. And I have this guy because he's one that I've been all over all off season, or I was all over. And he came out and did horribly in his MLB. I don't know if I call it a debut, but this is Parker Meadows, who mm-hmm. is finally starting to come back. Um, coming back, started his uh, rehab assignment today, 0 for 2 with two walks. <laughs> and uh, there's really no way around it. He sucked. He was horrible. I mean, sucked is putting it lightly to start the year in major leagues. But this is why I'm buying back on him is when he went back down to AAA, he made a tangible change. He focused on, and you can see video evidence of it, he focused on not dropping his hands so much when he would start a swing. And if you look at his numbers in AAA, it absolutely worked out for him in 221 plate appearances, slash line of 298, 394, 511 with eight home runs and the big part, 19 stolen bases. So the fact that he was making a tangible change to his swing, the results showed, I think that Meadows is that guy. Like I love to see when guys make changes and it works out. Um, obviously the MLB will be the real test, right? We'll see how that, yep. uh, how that translates, but I'm not going to give up on him because of the poor first half. I, I believe in tweaks being a real thing. And, um, I liked him in the off season, so I'm still here and I believe in a second half surge for, for Parker Meadows. So I'm all in for it. All right. I got someone who is now being picked up everywhere. Still only 35% rostered, but that's going to be going up um in yahoo leagues and he's playing time is going to go up as well after the Chaz chisholm trade or jazz chisholm trade uh and that's xavier edwards who obviously hit for the cycle today uh so that's the big news but over the last two weeks he's up over almost 600 on base with now seven rbis eight runs scored that one home run from today and seven stolen bases so this guy has been killing it 
over the last couple of weeks. Um, and he's as hot as they come and still available in a lot of leagues. So I try and go grab him. I think it's a great call. Yeah. I mean, I mentioned him last week as I don't know if it was the prospect report or it might've been the waiver wire part of the episode. Um, but I, I'm, I'm a fan of Xavier Edwards. I don't know if he's, you know, going to be a fantasy stud long term, but definitely has some potential and, and, you know, keep riding him. Like you said, do you have any other waiver wire pickups? No more waiver wire. Guys. All right. So let's jump to who's hot and who's not before we get into the streaming pitchers. So sure. let's start. Um, I'm going to kick it off with, because you have to start here with Tyler Fitzgerald. Uh, <laughs> when you hit six home runs in a week, you're hot. <laughs> Sorry. And so Tyler Fitzgerald, maybe the hottest player in baseball for the San Francisco Giants. Um, six home runs, 10 RBIs, 10 runs scored, and a 500 on base in the last week. He's been the number one fantasy baseball player. He is hot. Yeah, there's no way around it. He he was scorching hot for a while, and then he's kept it up a little bit. I mean, he's on a mm-hmm. at least 10 game hit streak. I can't see any further back on fan tracks here, but um, yeah, he's been he's been doing real well. We talked about him on uh, on Wednesday last week as well. So um, love to see that. I went with Brandon Lau, second baseman mm. for the Tampa Bay Rays, has also been very very hot. Last 17 games, he's hitting 324 with six home runs, 11 RBIs, 11 runs, and my favorite part is when I look at his Savant page, his underlying numbers are just scorching hot. Like 375 X Woba, X slug of 535. He's barreling the ball at 16%, which is just unbelievable. And we've seen great numbers like this from Brandon Lau before. He had 39 home runs in 2021, kind of been plagued by some injuries. So really hoping he can keep this up because this is a fun player to watch when he is healthy. Yeah, um, so I have a bunch of hot. So I mean, I okay, can keep even... going. That was my only one. I okay, I, I have I'll rattle them off. Yeah, go for it. Cattell Marte. We've been waiting for this all year. Um, so finally, six home runs in his last fifteen games, three seventy average, four forty six on base. Um, so you know he's been as hot as they come. So good for him. Let's get to a couple others. This one I love, Lawrence Butler. And by the way, not only has Lawrence Butler been, and he's, again, 500 on base in the last week, two home runs, four RBIs, nine runs scored. In the last two weeks, he's got 15 RBIs and five home runs in the last two weeks, plus two stolen bases. So it's not like he's, you know, he's stealing bases too. He's doing everything. The The Oakland Athletics have scored, I think, the most. They've hit, sorry, not, they're not scored. They've hit the most home runs in baseball in the month of July. No team in Major League Baseball has hit more home runs than the Oakland A's. It's crazy, but it's true. Um, so that that's pretty crazy. And Lawrence Butler has been a big part of that. So he is as hot as they come. Um, I got a couple more here because I have some pictures for you as well. Let's go with Blake Snell. Blake Snell in the month of July also. A .75 ERA and a .63 whip in the month of July. He has 30 strikeouts in 24 innings. Of course, 15 of them came in the six innings that he threw on Saturday. So obviously Blake Snell dominant and he didn't just do that against nobodies. He did that in four starts. He faced the Dodgers in there. He faced Minnesota in there. I know he also had Colorado and it's another, uh, I forget the other team who, who it was. Minas- um, oh, I'm sorry. Toronto. I said, what was that? Toronto. Yeah. Toronto. So Minnesota, Toronto, LA. And of course the Rockies in, in San Francisco, not in, a, not in Colorado is okay. A little bit weaker, but still, I mean, Blake Snell second half kind of guy. That's how he won the Cy Young award was surging in the second half. Uh, could we be seeing that surge and could he be doing it in another uniform that's chasing a playoff spot and all of a sudden he's a little bit more jacked up and juiced up and ready to go another guy the last two starts and this is amazing because I last time I was on here we talked about I was going to the game on Monday and I was going to go see him get his shit rocked that was Carlos Rodon well guess what <laughs> he delivered a one run seven inning ten strikeout performance where he gave up only two hits and two walks um, and was fantastic and then followed it up on Sunday Night Baseball to clinch a series the first time the Yankees have won a Sunday night baseball game in Boston since 2021 uh six and a third innings got the win seven strikeouts also only gave up uh two runs and had that one inning where it looked rough he gives up the two home runs then gives up the triple to Devers it's like runner on third nobody out there's no way he's preventing this run from score and then he did uh so incredible stuff uh, you know credit where it's due from Carlos Rodon are you ready for who is not hot because I got a couple yeah, do you, you should probably start then because, again, I just got the one. 
All right, so let's start with your guy, Joey Loprofito. Just hasn't been able to yeah. get it going at the major league level. It's a combination of not getting great playing time, but only one hit in his last 18 at-bats. He does have two RBIs, but one hit in the last two weeks. He's been you know, in and out of the lineup, and they're not sending him down, it seems like. That's the good news for him. Uh, so maybe if he could get some more playing time, he could stick it out. But as of right now, on a scorching hot Houston team, he's not getting it done. Yeah, he was always kind of a high risk, high reward profile. He hits the ball hard. He's got speed. But yeah, you're right. I mean, the last 10 games, just two hits. It hasn't looked good for Joey Loperfito. Maybe they sent him down, like you said, get some work, get some consistent playing time. He's definitely not playing against lefties right now. So um, at least he's strong side of the platoon. But at this rate, it's not going to last. All right. Who do you have? Who's not hot? Um, I have Noel V. Marte. Third mm. baseman for the Cincinnati Reds. This is a guy that, again, I was all over in the offseason. One of your guys. And, yeah. Um, since returning from PEDs in just 89 at-bats, I know, small sample. People um, are hitting, asking, was it the mm-hmm. PEDs? It very well could be. He's hitting 180, 221 on base with just two home runs. And even his rehab starts, I'm not quite sure what you call those rehab starts when he was playing, when he was suspended. I don't know what you call those, but... Even then, he didn't look that great. His numbers were not uh, phenomenal, which is kind of scary considering he wasn't facing MLB pitching. I will say I'm not overly concerned in the long run, but I am definitely concerned for the remainder of this year. Um, Did the PEDs help him? Uh, I'm not sure, but Rami, if you put a gun to my head right now, I'm saying yes, they definitely did help him. Just from everything that we've seen this year, I think he may be a good buy low in Dynasty, but... I'm not touching him this year in redraft. It's just, it's too risky. I would never put a gun to your head, uh, Vince. I would never do such a thing. But hey, if I did, you would tell me that maybe I would tell you Noel V is. is, Um, I got two more. One, I mean, people are starting to drop him in some leagues, and he's first and third base eligible on a team that we like, the Cincinnati Reds, but that's Jamer Candelario. Uh, Only three hits in his last 32 at bats, uh, a 143 average over the last two weeks, no home runs. No stolen bases. So a guy who's been having a pretty solid season, particularly in the power uh, department, 16 home runs is solid, and he had, doesn't have a home run in the last uh, two weeks. And then another guy who was one of the best first basemen was an all-star, and we were talking about him as – we talked about him a couple of weeks ago when we did that all-star episode as, wow, I mean, we never saw this coming as being one of the best first basemen. That's Josh Naylor. Well, three for his last 27 uh, over his last couple of weeks, he's three only three hits in his last 27 at bats. Also, no home runs, just a 200 on base percentage, only two RBIs, a run scored, and one stolen base. So, another guy who's having an, a fantastic year. I mean, overall, you look at the season, you even look at the last month, he's only got two home runs in the last month on the season, he's got 22. So, that's a significant slowdown uh, for Josh Naylor, who was on pace for 40 home runs this year. And now not, <laughs> you know what I mean? Now he, he may be closer to 30. So, uh, and, you know, only two in the last month is is the concerning part there because this is a guy, like I said, first couple months, the first three months of the season, 20 home runs in the last month, only two. Uh, that's the concerning part. And then the you look at the on base dipping really low over the last couple of weeks to now 200. Uh, that's, that's concerning for Josh Naylor. Yeah, and I do think, I... I... Saw he sat out today, and I think that's good for him. I honestly think maybe give him even a few more days to sit out. Um, yep. Just get your head right. You know, maybe he says he had he was beaten up or beat up. That, so, that's what it was. Yep. Whatever it is, you know, sit out a few days, take your time, come back, because there's a phenomenal ball player in there. I think he may just need. I mean, he proved time. it for three months. This is, yeah. That wasn't a fluke. It's a long season. We we knew he had it in him. It's a long season. He hasn't played more than 122 games at all in his career. So he's already at 97. Maybe it's just a, a little bit much for him this year. All right, let's move on to some pitchers to stream. Uh, and I will – how many do you have? You took my Tyler Phillips. So now, 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 it's now it, I have right. one. Now I have one. All right, so I'll, I'll start off with uh, James Paxton, um, who you can stream. Sure. A weird situation with him where he gets cut. And then um, picked up by Boston. So he's playing against Seattle, one of his former teams this week. And we know Seattle's offense, again, got better. We'll see if by Tuesday at 7 p.m. they're even better than they are right now. I think they will be. Um, but Randy Rosarena is, you know, one step closer to them having a better offense. I don't know if, you know, this trade deadline is 6 p.m. On, on Tuesday. I don't know if by 7 they have the reinforcements there. Uh, so against an offense that's been struggling in Seattle, 
I would take James Paxton in his Red Sox home debut um, to beat the Reds or to beat Seattle and have a pretty good start. That's fair. I like it. Um, I decided to go with the guy who essentially replaced James Paxton, um, River Ryan, pitcher for the Los Angeles Dodgers mm-hmm. who came up recently. Um, and he's going against Oakland. It's next Sunday. So August 4th, you have a few days to do it. Ryan is only rostered in 47% of fan tracks leagues. So widely available. He's not a big flashy name, um, but I'm going to start River Ryan against Oakland and you mentioned it. And so this is something maybe to watch out for. I imagine the A's make some moves right yep. before the deadline. Um, you mentioned how hot their offense has been definitely a little bit scary, something that I was thinking of, but at the same time, I think they make some moves. I think their offense gets a little bit worse. I think they're cooling off. Um, and so far in two starts, River Ryan, 11 innings, just one earned run, 10 strikeouts, eight of which came in one start. Um, I will say he has six walks, so that's a little bit scary, but just six hits allowed. And the phenomenal stuff is he's allowing, he's not allowing hard contact. He hasn't allowed a barrel once. So he's inducing some of the weakest contact in MOB over those two starts. If he can just limit the walks, he should walk all over Oakland on Sunday, and he's a great streaming option. I see what you did there. Uh, Remember when I told you that uh, Josh Bell was going to get hot, and then he did? I said because they were going to trade him. He got hot, and then he got cut. (laughs) What? I mean, he hits five home runs this week. So I I, I totally forgot to mention this, but he has a 500 on base, hits five home runs, driving nine runs, scores six runs um, in a week, and then gets cut. He's going to be on. Do you think Seattle's going to pick him up? Do you think the Yankees are going to pick? Someone's picking him up this week, right? Yeah, Seattle's a good landing spot. And see, this is why we gotta we gotta do a little more communication because that may have been my MVP of the week. <laughs> oh, I love that. <laughs> yeah, but oh, you're absolutely right. He was on fire. And when I was looking at, I was scrolling through Twitter. It said Josh Bell was cut, and I was like, this has to be a joke, right? There's no way. It's unbelievable. They just cut him. I mean, he's one of they, the best hitters over the last week in all of baseball. Like, and you'd think like so. So here's the thing: if he's on waivers, so what happens is if somebody claims him, they can make a trade for him, right? That's how that yeah. worked. So I assume it just it it'll, will end up being like a waiver trade, right? Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, that's just to me. I was so funny seeing that. Uh, I, I was I was uh, laughing at that. Um, and let's go. My last. Um, I forgot my lock of the week was. I, I have it here. But um, all right. My last pitcher to stream. Um, I'll give you. Let's go Alec Marsh. He's going to be pitching against the the White Sox on yeah. um on Monday. So that that's always, you know, we love to play that game. Hey, start throw whoever's going against the White Sox. So, uh let's go there or you could even go and and this guy, I mean, might be more of a waiver wire pickup than a streaming pitcher. And that's uh is that Jeffrey Springs, mm-hmm. um the pitcher for Tampa who's making a season debut after season ending uh Tommy John last year, right? Yep. So um, he's going to be playing against Miami, who, like we just mentioned, lost Josh Bell. They've lost ja- Chaz, uh, Jazz Chisholm. Yes. And, you know, so probably yeah. their offense is getting worse than it was. So uh, I like either of those options for this week as well. Um, see, again, my lock. Can you guess who it is? Jeffrey freaking Springs. I've been all over um, this guy. I'm so um, good at this. You are. I think you maybe saw my notes before this. I didn't. Um, Hey, I'll give you a new MVP. How about Taj Bradley? Oh, that's been unbelievable to watch him really grow into himself this year. It's been unbelievable to watch. And you want me to give you a lock? I guarantee after the Yankees scored all those runs in Philly, uh, sorry, in Boston over the weekend, Zach Wheeler is going to shut them the fuck down on Monday. <laughs> I mean, it's not even going to be fun. It's going to be non-competitive tomorrow. What? Just watch. I'm gonna, I'm gonna love watching. I love watching Wheeler dominate. It's just so much fun. Same, exactly, and I can't yeah. wait to watch him dominate the. Yankees. I mean, I, I'm gonna be upset at it as a Yankee fan, but he's going to dominate yeah. the Yankees. The Yankees don't score runs like that and then follow it up with a good performance. Um, so now that we know who your MVP. And lock and uh, lock. You stole them both. You just um so I'll and you do... stole one of my streamers. You're just the worst. You know what? I'm going first. All 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 episode on Wednesday. I'm going first. Okay, I'm, fine. I'm gonna fine. mention you, everybody. You go You're gonna have right nobody now. to mention. You're gonna have you nobody. Go first right now. Do you have anything to to go first about? No, <laughs> no, I'm, I'm all out of stuff. Jeffrey Springs. He's starting on Tuesday. 
no, so do you have no anything Josh to say about him? Ass. Um, he had 12 rehab starts. He's he's not going to face any restrictions. I, I like that. Got good quality that, start that potential. Good. good good win potential. Um, he's just a stud. I mean, we we hope that he can come back and and be that stud right away. But um, he's also I saw potentially up for a trade. Like he could be an arm that the Rays try to move. Oh, they have plenty of arms. They're, they're moving so, everyone. Um, I, I wouldn't be surprised to see him on a different team too. He could be in the bullpen. He could be on a different, I, I don't know, but as of now, he's supposed to start on Tuesday against Miami and he should be in your lineup. Yep. Absolute fire mm-hmm. sale. My MVP of the week is actually a guy who I hope gets traded, but I'm not sure if he will. Um, and that is Matt Chapman. He had a 429 on base, two home runs, only three RBIs, but seven runs scored. He's been really, really solid for the last forever, really for the last you know month at least. Uh, he's had a solid season, and I'm really hoping that he does get traded to a team where he can produce and be in the middle of a lineup. Maybe the Yankees, fingers crossed, um, and we could see him produce even more. It was a guy that I really hoped the Cubs would have signed, and clearly you can see that they would have loved to have him with the defensive struggles. Morales. Oh, yeah. Um, and the thing I love about Chapman that is kind of under the radar, he has 12 steals. Matt Chapman, oh. 12 steals. Who would have thought? Like third base, yep. power slugging guy, also chipping in 12 steals, 15 bombs, 240 average. And it's Take been helping me. Oh, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, and then my lock, my absolute lock is I was going to actually go with the entire Phillies pitching staff. So they have it lined up to go Wheeler on Monday. They have Nola on Tuesday and then Sanchez on Wednesday. I mean, it's going to be they're gonna it's gonna be open season on the Yankees. Uh just just you wait. I, I will love to see it. Um, like you said, Yankees are 17 over 500 right now. Is that what you said? That's something like that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, but they're still struggling, right? That's, that wasn't that's the fun of baseball. We, we talked about that before we started recording, right? Yeah. So yeah. that was um uh Stu Gotts, for people who don't know, who is the uh co-host of the Dan Labitard show. Uh, he filled in for Boomer Size on WFN. I worked on the morning show this week, and he was talking about, was like, yo, why are you guys freaking out about the Yankees? They're like 17 games over 500. They'll make the playoffs anyway. They're going to be fine. What's the difference? And, you know, it's so different when you're in a market where you're doing daily baseball discourse where you have to overreact to everything that happens every single day. Um, and so, yeah, the Yankees, I mean, they just had a good series, but they scored a whole bunch of runs. What was it, seven on Friday night, 11 on Saturday, and then eight tonight? Like, Dude, there's no way they're keeping that up. Uh, so I'd expect, especially, you know, a tough, quick turnaround from Sunday night baseball, get from Boston to Philly and settle in and play a night game. Yeah, there, there's not a fucking chance that the Yankees show up tomorrow. And I'll be working the game. So can't so wait to keep watch. Keep us updated Zach on Twitter. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Zach Wheeler will mow him down. I'd love to see it. I got to remember to put him in my lineup. I'm going to do that right now. I forget oh yeah um is there anyone so I had um I, I do like Wells though I, I like that mm-hmm. like like you my my team's finally starting to get to come together a little bit I don't want to jinx it but I mean you know with Imanaga Gosman had a great start this week mm-hmm. um Michael King's been good Luis Castillo do you think Luis Castillo could get moved for a bat I've been thinking about this like you could trade him theoretically to a contender He's an ace, but he's the only one that they're actually paying. They could look at Brian Wu and and um, Logan Gilbert and the other kid that George Kirby that they have, and just be like, "Do we really need Luis Castillo in addition to this when we could just build on what we have here? We're dying for offense. Who's trading an ace the level of Castillo? Someone might be willing to overpay. Let's go get again. I keep using this name, but let's go get Pete Alonso. Like you know what I mean." Yeah, um, I don't know what I uh, got to see when his contract expires. So he's through 2027. I mean, what do you get in return for three years of Luis Castillo? That's I you're going to need a lot more than half, more year than just Alonso, half a year of Pete Alonso. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. That's my point. It, but there's got to be some sort of I mean, maybe I, that's a good point. I don't know. Maybe you the Cubs give him Ian and Happ and, you know. Right. What, but what if you go know. to Baltimore and it's like Colton Kowser and Jackson Holiday? You know what I mean? Like, yeah. No, they're not trading Holiday. Maybe Kowser, maybe a Kierstad, maybe a Mayo. I don't know about that. But Right. But like two mm-hmm. of their young offensive, like, 
prospects for an, a second ace, and now you're going to a playoff series. And it's like, hey, we have Burns and Castillo back to back. Beat us. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. I, I don't, and and still enough offense, right? They just trade Austin Hayes like for a reliever. Like the offense is they're overflowing. Like Santander again just doesn't freaking stop hitting home runs. Isn't it beautiful? I love it. I'm so happy I called. I, I put a flag on him earlier too because uh, how great was my deal uh, call too? He was so great. Who, which my, one? My Jeff McNeil call going into oh, yeah? The, yeah? this mm-hmm. week. Yeah. That one came out of nowhere because he was, you know, he was no, uh, but it didn't. not He's, doing like, too I told well. You, the at bats were starting to look, he was starting to yeah. look locked yeah. in. Like just the way he was taking pitches. And uh, of course, he was over for today. But anyway, all right, that'll do it for us, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, anything yeah, else? Good. Anything? No. Do you think we missed anything? Happy, uh, happy Sunday. And see you on Wednesday for the Wednesday or Thursday for yeah, the uh, trade big trade, big trade recap mm-hmm. where we'll go through all of um, the the adjusted values based on the trades and hopefully we'll get I mean we'll put this together we'll go through every single trade I mean it, as long as they are you know rostered in more than like 40 percent of leagues yeah. you know what I mean mm-hmm. if, if a guy who is rostered so if we're talking about relievers unless they're getting a closer role or somebody's losing a closer role we're not going to mention mm-hmm. it um but you know guys have already been moved and guys are going to be moved and we'll talk about like austin hayes is not all rostered in a lot of leagues i would roster him i would pick him up i think like he's gonna get a jolt of energy um you talk about pickups wave wire pickups pick up austin hayes that's gonna be a guy who's now in a good situation where he's gonna have a good offense around him and play every day he's gonna be in a better situation I, i would roster him we'll see what the playing time looks like but Again, um, there's a lot of different things that are going to happen uh, between now and Tuesday. So we'll talk about it all of it on Wednesday. Beautiful. See you then. All right. See you.